Oh, Salim, what is uh, SFE for Iraq also, right? Sorry, come again. Twelve. What did What did you say? For us, yeah, I, I'm asking for us is also SFE for Iraq. No, he, he he's uh, not, uh, you know, uh, SFE for Iraq. However, you know, he got a lot of interest, and you know, uh, he used to work for Pakistan SFE, so that's the reason why, you know, I inducted him. Okay, so who gonna be the SFE for Iraq? I am. Ah, oh, okay, that's why. <clears throat> okay, so now this is about XCO. And then we move to target list management. Okay. Let me share my screen. Okay. So for XCP, right? Uh, management, we will cover XCP creation, manual creation, update the XCP detail and related page, and bug upload of XCP contact. Okay. So about the creation of XCP, right? If you want to create it manually, you go to contact and then you click new. Then the system will open a screen for you to enter the XCP data. Okay, so you fill in the data and you click save. So here's gonna be the information that we have for XCP. Salutation name, okay, especially account name. You will need, for example, if uh, I'm an XCP and I have my private clinic also. So you should create an XCO for my private clinic and then create a contact for me and then, then link me. Okay, indicate that under account name, this is the private clinic. Okay, and then just a quick um, uh, remind you guys about duplication rule. Okay, so for XCP, we run the duplication rule based on license ID, email, uh, or phone. Okay, so every time you enter license ID, you get email, um, uh, or you like you enter a phone, the system show you like what is the duplicate data. So yeah. You should be able to see the duplicate contact there also. Okay. So this is how you create a new XCP. But team, this is just the very first step as you register this XCP in AN Connect. Okay. Later I will show you how you will uh, define, okay, assign this XCP to MedRep target list. Okay. Then on XCP contact, there's one part that you should not update, create, okay? Unless this XCP, no, actually it's not gonna be the case, okay? So this is the consent information and marketing consent information. You don't input any data here, okay? Because for the system itself, we already have a trigger, okay? <clears throat> a trigger to auto update this part based on the actual consent that the rep captured via picture, okay? So every time the rep they capture consent for XCP, okay? Later, I will walk you through how to set up consent topic and I will explain a little bit there also about the logic for this one. But then, now, right, let's say for Saudi, okay? Because for some, affi like some affiliate in Europe, they have different consent type. So later, right, let's say MENAP, you also have the same practice. You have that the, rep, the XCP need to give you the consent, okay, so that you can send all the um, marketing messages to them. So we consider that as a communication consent, okay? Then you know that we have, um, for Europe, they also have data processing or data storage consent, right? So SFE, if you have more than one consent tab, okay, then you define which consent tab is the primary one, okay? Meaning that every time the rep meet with the XCP, we train them that they will need to get the consent agreement from the XCP for that primary consent tab. Then when they get the consent, okay, agreement for that primary consent tab, okay, then the system will auto update the consent information section on the XCP page layout. Okay, it will update the channel that the um, XCP agreed to opt in. What is the site day, expiry day, revoke day? Okay, you might add, ask me, what is the difference between expiry day and revoke day? Okay, 
Basan asked me, but Basan and Ali asked me yesterday. So let me put it this way. If the rep, okay, previously able, he was able to get XCP consent agreement, okay? XCP opted in for some channel. But now, after half a year, maybe about sent too many emails to that XCP, he said that he no longer want to receive communication from Abbott, right? And then he asked the rep to opt it, okay, out of the channel, okay? So at that time, an active consent become a revoked consent because at that time, XCP already said that he want to opt out for all of the channel, okay? That he agreed to opt it in before. So that is when it become revoked, okay? When you test pitch your app as a met rep, then you see another status called rejected. So what does rejected mean? It means that I meet Khalid for the first time. This is a totally new XCP, okay, to Abbott. But then I asked Khalid for consent and Khalid that said, no, hey, call, I'm too busy. I don't want to receive any communication. Okay, just visit between you means oh, good enough. Then uh, met rep, they still create a consent. Just that it's going to have the status change from blank to be rejected, meaning that the XCP not agree to consent to receive communication from Abbott at first time. Okay, later if the rep, they manage to persuade Khaled, I, bus I managed to persuade Khaled, right? Then I get his consent, he opted in uh, for some channel, then consent status will become active. Okay, so this information later when we have the marketing cloud for main app, right? Then marketing team will be based on this information here on contact level to send the communication to the XCP. Okay, and based on the status also. But then again, this is not a, a section for you to enter. Okay, this is going to be auto populated based on the consent, the actual consent that the MedRep captured. Okay, any question? I text silence as no. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So then next one is going to be just mailing address and order address. If you have the mailing address and order address of the XCP, you can enter it here, but it's not mandatory. Okay. Then next one, right, is this how you're going to update the XCP in details, right? So when you open an XCP page, right, where's my mouse? No, it's okay. So when you open an XCP, okay, you'll be able to see the details of the XCP. So if you want to update the data, right, you click button edit here, okay, to update his profile. But if this is related uh, to all the data, for example, Previously, I worked at uh, one XCO and then one private clinic, but the business of private clinic is going so well, so I decided that I will focus on my private clinic only, right? Then, okay, you know that the, the rep told you about that one, so you can go to Salesforce, okay, and then remove the relationship of XCB Koi at the hospital and just only keep Okay, the working like the 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 XCO XCI here to be Koi private clinic only. Okay. Yep. So how you do it? Okay. Uh, we are this part. We are related account when you hover. Okay, onto the related account tab, it show you the list of the XCO that this XCP is working at. Then you can click on the arrow here. Okay, at the relationship. Okay, and then you update it. OK. Yep. If you want to add new relationship and you click add relationship, OK, then select the account that this XCP is also working in. OK. Yep. And then same as the previous when we talk about XCO management, you select the best time to visit this XCP at this XCO, the title, the role. OK, and then you click save. OK. And then, okay, so this is just about event, okay? Then next one 
it's going to be about consent. OK, but actually we just want to show you like all the tab that we have in A and Connect. It doesn't mean that SFE will have to do all of this, but we still need to show you. OK, so on contact object uh, on a cap, sorry, on contact page layout, you will see a tab called consent management. It will show the list of all of the consent, OK, historical data that the rep or you have in your database, OK, maybe it's from marketing team. OK, then we have it in a connect. So if you want to edit or create a new consent for this XCP, then you click button new under consent management tab. OK, then the screen will open the page for you to enter the value. OK. Yep, so that's it for the uh, XCP. OK. The next one is going to be about box up thought of. Uh, yes, but sound. You raise uh, your hand. Sorry, Chloe, because uh, yes, yes, a, a small question. The HCP HTO relationship, this is something new for me because before the one HTP belongs to one HTO, but mm. this is an add thing and it is a good thing. Now, yeah. if the HTP works in a hospital and a clinic, but uh, two different team members are visiting that. You know, for example, I will give you the example we have in Saudi. You know, bariatric surgeons that they do the sleeves or something. Uh -huh. They're usually working. Uh, they are they are usually working in a governmental hospital in the morning, okay, and a private hospital uh, evening. These mm. two HTOs are not belonging to the same medical rep. Okay. Okay. So. If I put this relation that he works in um, King Abdul Aziz in, and and also in the uh, Salama Hospital, okay, he he works in both in both uh, clinics. The uh -huh. medical rep, each medical rep will see the HCP and the visits will be translated in the HTO he own is uh, which is only targeted to him. Yeah, right? correct, correct. OK, so this will solve a problem because before I was <clears> putting it in, in one hospital and <clears> the <throat> other medical rep uh, doesn't record the calls because the, the HTP cannot be duplicated in two places. But now with this relation, it is visible and each medical rep will see this HTP uh, in the HTO he, uh, he assigned to him. This is yeah, correct, correct or targeted to him. Correct. Thank you right. very much. Thank you. Just wanted to confirm. OK. OK, satisfied, but sound. OK, why well, you give me the impression that I'm making you <laughs> everything satisfied? Well, not everything is OK. Quite, uh, quite. I'm a person who asks a lot. Uh, I'm satisfied and everything is OK. Yeah, yeah, actually, like th that's why I said that I need like so many questions, you know, because when you ask question, right, it means that and we can answer it. It means that we are able to resolve one of the issues that you are having now. You know what I mean, right? So it should be fine. OK, whenever I'm asked you whether you're satisfied, I mean that I am seeking for an answer that, hey, co I'm satisfied as it. <laughs> OK, it's a result with the new system. OK, the next one is going to be about bug upload XCP contacts. OK, so you prepare a file like this, then you're going to upload into the system. OK, so when you import the data, we are using search for inspector. OK. The system will show you what is the duplicate data here. OK, it show you duplicate with which record also. OK, yep, so that's why again I said that Sales for inspectors are really amazing tool for you to use when you want to upload the data. OK. So then now next one we move to target list management. OK, so. As you already know, now with the AN Connect system for the rep that you have in the current system, right? We migrate from your legacy system to AN Connect. You don't need to do this. You don't need to manually create a target list or uh, upload the target list for the rep every month unless there's a huge change. OK, take the example that for us uh, asked before. OK, so now the whole like I, I'm now in Ho Chi Minh City, OK, but then now I moved to another city. OK, so my territory changed. 
okay? Which means that I have a new list of uh, XCO and then also a new list of XCP, for example, okay? So in that scenario, as we share with the rep and then with the first slide manager yesterday, we will not ask the user to go and then submit data chain request manually one by one, right? And this is what we are like during uh, blueprint, okay? For mass change, huge change, okay, major change, okay? We give the SFE the tool to mass upload onto the system, okay? So, for example, now I change to another territory. So as I trained you before, you just need to add me to the new territory, right? And then you deactivate all the target lists that are assigned to me from the old territory, okay? You upload onto the system to suspend it, okay? And then now you're gonna uh, get a new list of XCP and mass upload from me, okay? When there's a major change, okay? Is it clear about the use case for this one? For target list management. When you have major change, okay, then you use this one. Okay, if nothing changed to the rep target list, so every month the target list is going to be out of cone and met rep will be performed the met rep monthly target planning. Okay, team? Okay, so the very first thing about visit KPI and event KPI setup. Khalid, are you in a call? As we talked last time, Khalid, during the global call, right, for visit KPI setup, it's going to be done by COE team, correct, Khalid? The one with Jason Fogmat called. Okay, I think Talis is looking on something else. Okay, anyway, mm -hmm. I showed the SFE how to set up the visit mm -hmm. KPI and event KPI, okay? Just that event KPI you set up here is going to be for Power PI report, okay? Visit KPI will impact the MedRep monthly target planning, okay? So here, how you do it? So you go to setup, okay? This is backend setup. You enter custom metadata tag, okay, here. There's a, there is one row called country business rule. You click on it, okay, and then you select the record belong to your country, okay. Right now, now you cover Egypt and, and United Arab UAE, right? Then you should go to Egypt. If Egypt have update, but visit KPI, same for UAE. Okay, and, and Basan, you go and in charge for Saudi. Antap will be for Kenya. And then Salim going to be for Iraq. Don't update the wrong uh, business rule. Okay, guys. Now, right. So, question that Faraz, you asked me yesterday. What if uh, the, who's that? What if Pakistan only have one weekend day, right? So, we are custom made at metadata via custom metadata tab okay under tot and holiday you will have the weekends okay there are two weekend days if for your affiliate right this is there's no weekend day right then you put it zero okay yeah and then for the weekend day that you have only one weekend day right we have two box here okay but you just need to fill in one box leave the order with zero value at zero okay the next one is going to be for the target, okay, the code target here, okay, so it will have the format like this, okay. First one is going to be business unit, next one going to be sub-business unit. So on top, even though like Kenya, we don't have the sub-business unit from the sales team structure, okay, but then for AN Connect, we still need to like copy the value from business unit and pass that to sub-business unit. Okay, so for Kenya, it will be hybrid and then hybrid. Okay, and okay. then and then you will set that profiling classification. Then next keyword, right? It's gonna be profiling classification. Then next one, right? It's gonna be for maybe let me open that one in AN Connect now. Easier for you to look at. Me one second.
Yeah, and Tim, as I as we align right during the design for Matt Redmond Lee planning, if next month you have a KPI update, right? You should uh go and then update the uh, country business rule, okay? When you have the update, so that when the rep they perform the Matt Redmond Lee planning, they will see the updated with a uh, KPI. Okay, so here I have. Iraq. Um, mm, 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 mm. Let me open Iraq. and the the rule applies to us as well. When we update the the rule, it will be applied for next month's target plan. Correct. 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 It will not affect. It will not affect the current. So, for example, by Last week of no by mid week of the month, I will update the KPI so it will be read, ready for the team if they want to make their uh, next month plan. Exam example last week of the month or something. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So you see that if if I expand this box right, it's just easier for you to follow right. This is your business unit sub business unit. So if you have any chain right team, just keep it as it is and change the value inside. Okay, between the bracket. Okay. Then now, right, this is classification A. This is face to face visit target. This is virtual visit target. OK, so for example, if later Iraq, right, you have one here, then you add here one. OK, then when MedRep, they perform the monthly target planning for next month, they will see the target out of update and populate on the screen for them. They see that IMF under bediatrics team Class A system show that it's going to be four and one like this. OK. Yep. OK, and then the next one, right, is going to be. Any question? Yeah, Koi, I'm sorry, I couldn't answer you before I had someone on my desk. Um, I I want to hear from the team here because for me personally, I think it's uh, very complicated. Um, because if, if someone misses a semicolon or something or, or screws up with the, the, the format, it could potentially ruin all of the KPIs on our dashboards and all of the rollout of the KPIs across, unless there's some sort of validation rule, which I don't think there is because it's metadata. So in that case, I would prefer to have it done through the, the, CO, uh, the COE, through the support team. However, I also want to hear from the team here because I don't want if if the team here is comfortable that they're, they're are they're comfortable with with adjusting this code and they know the risks of doing it incorrectly and they're okay with that then i'm more than happy to to have the team do it um, i'm just weary that this is a very important point and if one thing is missed because it's code then um it will screw up all of our targets across the across the business unit or across the country I would uh, agree with you, and uh, I think it, it should go to the support team. Okay, okay so my, my opinion is that uh, will the support team will reply uh, as soon as possible? I know the sensitivity of this logic and these uh, formulas, the semicolon or something, it's very sensitive. Yet we have to change this because the targets so uh, are changed on monthly base according to summertime, you know, this and that. Many things will be on monthly base. So will the support team will will reflect this uh, quick according to us? Yeah. For, for this, if this is guaranteed, we are happy to do it. Uh, through through them. For my side, I don't see it's a problem because uh, I'm practicing this through my Excel, so uh, I know a little bit about mm -hmm. this. I know the sensitivity of the, yeah. the, the logic. Um, exactly. I prefer to do it. It's very easy. But if they will respond quick, uh, so give them the the, the privilege yeah. to so do that. It will be. My my suggestion would be. Koi, in your um, uh, transition, or not transition, handover to COE, can we please put this as one of the monthly activities that has to be done, okay? And this would be considered a critical ticket. 
let's establish some of these tasks from now and we won't take away the capability from this team. It will be up to them um, to do if they want, like in Basan's case, or um, if they don't want and they want to raise a ticket with it, then it would the ticket would take higher <coughs> priority before the close of the month. Yeah, I, I think that let's stick with that, uh, Khalid. I'm talking to Kokshin now about like tap up ticket for yes. Nap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I so, will. So targets, okay. target creation should be a high priority or, or yep. a, a critical, critical ticket. One. Yep. Because it needs to be closed before the end of the month. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. A lie, a lie. Okay, cool. Yep. Okay. And then the next. Yeah. And then the next one, right, is going to be for event target setup, right? So you will see that here, right, if you have group meeting, okay, five. Round table, right? Gonna be four. So you just add it here. Okay. Yep. So that Power BI later they will take this data, this value. And if later you have new event tab, right? Again, I just train you here. Okay. But maybe the COE team will have with that. So you have here. And then you will, okay. Then Power BI will read it. Okay. Yep. So that you will be, we'll be able to run a report to see the actual, uh, semi event achieve uh, sorry actual uh, event achievement based on the target that we set up in AN connect okay same for visit is it clear team before i move to the next one okay i will not save anything here okay then next one right is going to be planning cycle so in AN Connect, we have a place called uh, a, a concept called planning cycle, met red monthly list, and target list. So you can so you can say that planning cycle, right? It show uh, at the affiliate level, okay? Like if your planning part, you do it like every plan your your uh, planning cycle is every month. So you should create a twelve planning cycle for your affiliate for every year. But if you have a planning cycle, it's not monthly, but it's just gonna be on quarter basis, right? So you should create a year have for four planning cycle, okay, every year. And then this is gonna be a really easy task. You just need to go to planning cycle, okay? Then you click new, and then you get gonna add like the planning cycle here, the start date and then the end date. So when you do it, please do it like at the beginning of the year, even like when the, the year not yet started, okay? So that, okay, then the system every month will auto create a thing called Met Rep monthly list, okay, for each Met Rep, okay? It will contain like the start date, end date of each Met Rep here, and then we will link off the target list to the Met Rep monthly list, okay? Yep, so that every time that the rep, actually now they are doing Met Rep monthly target planning via the Met Rep monthly list, okay? And then if you go to AN Connect now, right? It, let me open this one for you. Give me one second. <laughs> Team, you understand this one, right? Just let me know if this is too like the explanation I just gave is too technical, so I convert it into business terminology. Okay, so you see here, right? We have here Met Rep monthly list. Like this is a summary record, which show a summary of the rep target and actual for that month. Okay, here it show the information like this. Okay, target tracking breakdown of target achievement. Okay. Everything show here. Salim, you have question for me? Okay, thanks, Salim. Okay, so what you need to do for this part, right, is going to be create a planning cycle for next year, okay, before the beginning of next year. Okay, so that the system, okay, can run a met rep monthly list. Okay, create a met rep monthly list. We have the bad job to auto gone and create a met rep monthly list already. Okay, 
So um, this is a recommendation. Um, team, should we deploy team when we do the data migration? Should we and and like insert the planning cycle for MENAP each affiliate for the next five year? So that SFA you don't need to go and then create. Yes, this is simple thing, and uh, I don't believe it will be anything. It's only a planning cycle, so it will be every month it will appear to them, right? Yeah, correct. No need to do anything from our side. So after five years, inshallah, we will. If we if we are still here, inshallah, we will do it. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. Sure. Okay. So. so uh, you are suggesting that uh, we should uh, do this uh, planning uh, right in the beginning of the year uh, for the uh, each month, like uh, we are having it uh, monthly, so we need to create 12 cycles? Uh, no, actually, we just require to have planning cycle to be linked to the rep list so that we know that this target achievement, right, linked to which planning cycle of the affiliate OK, so that's why I, I, I asked to have this in advance. As you can see that the met red money list, right? The rep do it for next month already. So we have to have a planning cycle for next month. OK, yeah. Create it. Yeah, yeah. yeah planning cycle right now. Planning cycle is at affiliate level. Met red money list is at rep level. OK. That's why you see that the form, right? For the planning cycle, there's no place for you to indicate this belong to which met right? But when for met right monthly list, right? It's going to be at the rep right level like this one. Okay. Yep, it has the owner. Owner is going to be the rep. Okay. Okay. The reason why that, okay. So as I mentioned before, right? So now you have a new rep or maybe the rep change to another territory. Everything changed, right? So let's say that in summer, about Saudi, you recruit, you have many new rep on board it, right? And then you want to mass upload the target list. You don't want to create that manually for them. So first you will have to bulk upload the met rep monthly list first, okay? For each of the rep here. OK, you use this file to upload first. OK, and then when you create the target list, right, you will link each XCP of the rep to the map rep monthly list that you uploaded before. OK, yeah, you just need to do a VLOOKUP between those two files, map rep monthly list and then the target list file that you upload. OK, during the practice section for the uh, data upload, OK, we will practice step by step, okay, from that red monthly list and then for target list, how you prepare the file and then upload. That's okay. Okay, so now, right, let's say that um, you want to manually create one, assign one map rep to one XCP. You can go to Salesforce under target list, you click button new. OK, and then you select what is the which met rep here will and then which XCP. OK, target list going to be the re, to define the relationship between an XCP with a met rep. OK. Clear team. Then here you will define. Please repeat. Sorry. Yeah. So yeah, so territory, right? Hey, let's do quick knowledge check. OK, Brenda, can you let me know what does territory mean here? Which relationship will be defined when we create the territory? For the right. Mm. The territory so is for the med right? For this yeah. one that you're referring to. Yeah, but then territory, right? You use it to define the relationship between med rep and. Who? Which? What? The HCP. Hmm? No. Territory is for you to define the relationship between the MedRep and then the hospital, the XCI. 
okay? Target list is for you to define the relationship between the map rep and then the XCP. So the rep will only be able to see the XCP when you create, the, when there is a record, a target list record between that rep and then the XCP, okay? Okay, team. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, clear. Then next one, right, is going to be because now we do target on a monthly basis, right? So that is the reason why. Uh, I'm sorry, Corey. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you repeat what you just said to Brenda once more? Okay. The relationships between the yeah. rep and the HCO and HCI, uh, HCP? Yeah, yeah. Territory, okay. It defined the relationship between the rep and then the XCO so that the rep can see the, the hospital, okay, or the clinic. Mm -hmm. Okay, because we don't want like the rep to see the, the whole, like our universe, our, our master list, okay? So that's why we use territory to control the rep visibility over the XCO data, okay? Next one is that target list, okay? It's used to define the relationship between the rep and then the XCP, <laughs> meaning that the rep is only be able to see the XCP that has been added to their target list via the target list object. Is it clear now, Khalid? And yep. Thank you, Quinn. No, I wanted the team to hear it one more time, including myself. Yeah, and then when you create a new target list, right, you need to have that rep, met rep monthly list linked to this target list. OK, so that Power BI, when they run the report, right? Yeah, they will use that map rep money list to show the summary of the rep KPI visit achievement for that month. OK, then here you'll be able to set the face to face or virtual target call frequency for them. OK, and then also like define the status here. OK. So, so the MedRep monthly list is is the historical uh, record of yeah. the actual target list after the fact, after it's happened, right? No, MedRep monthly list is like a parent object, call it, okay, where it okay. controls and show you like how many XCP, okay, yeah, under target list of the rep. Via MedRep monthly list, you gotcha. see the three, yeah. We are targeting yes, gotcha. the target and actual achievement for each XCP. Okay. Now again, the scenario that the rep move have to cover another vacant territory, right? Twenty XCP from that vacant territory. So step by step, you assign that rep also to the vacant territory. Okay. Then you use a uh, bug upload feature to upload that 20 XCP from the vacant territory into the system. Update the, with the status as temporary. Okay. If the XCP is in the list of the rep, okay, for a long time, then you set it to be permanent. Okay. I don't know, like, uh, about MENAP whether you have the scenarios that like uh, LATAM and then like PA. If it is a temporary XCP, okay, then MedRep, they should be able to discuss, okay, with the light manager to adjust the target visit for that temporary XCP list, okay, because their permanent list considered to be the primary one, the key focus. Okay, is it the same here, Basan, for Saudi? That if you cover a vacant territory for a short period of time, then you can also like discuss to adjust the visit for that temporary list. Yeah, but it's uh, we don't have a status for that. When when a medical rep covers a new territory or a new HCO, for example, for a short period, uh, I assign that this the HCPs to him, and I decrease the frequency to P once per month, for example, because it is. 
uh, not a parent uh, territory for him or, or not uh, uh, something. Then after the assignment is gone, I deactivate the next month. This is how I do it in Saudi. Mm -mm. Yeah, but I think with AN Connect, right? You you know the reason why we have like status for for target list, right? Because yes. when the, yeah you know right because when you run no, the, no, the medical rep can do it okay yeah. from their yeah. own this is this is one thing but uh, i need you to go back to the one before Corey, please yeah yeah uh, let me I finish then i then i need to ask uh, about something okay okay yeah so this is about the reporting side okay if you think about like um when the light manager right they look at the rep kpi achievement and then they look at specific XCP, why they have profiling classification as A, but you just visit them one, one time a month, right? Maybe the FM is too busy, so he forget that this is a met a, a vet like that rep just cover because this is a vacant territory. Then the status will remind him about that one. Okay, that this is just because this is the temporary one. Okay. Now Masan, you can ask, what is your question? Okay, now this is I this a new medical rep, and mm. I'm putting his target list. This is uh. where I will put or create his target list. Now, mm. I look, search for the medical rep. I put the territory name. Okay, already this territory name, it will be auto-populated because I put him under certain territory, right? Or I will write it again here. Yeah, you will write again here, Masan. Okay. So some are not populated because one mm -hmm. map can be assigned to two or three territory, right? The permanent one and oh. then the temporary one also. Great. Then MR monthly list. Search for this is what the the MR monthly list. What it will show me this search button. HCOs uh, or mm -hmm. HCPs. No, it will show you the summary record of the rep for that month. So what you need to do, right? You need to set the start date and end date first, okay? Then the systems will suggest you the map rep monthly list record of this rep for that month. Okay, he is a new rep. Where the information will come from? I'm creating a target list for him. He, he is new to the organization. Uh huh. Then I, you have to create. I only created his. I created his username, password his territory okay. okay on the user module okay. then i will create a target list for him this is the second step correct no let yes. me no let me put it into uh our uh, full charge okay okay so this is the new rep right okay let's say that new rep setup process in an connect okay okay OK, so here's the one that you will do. Here's the step that you will do, right? When you have a new rep, first you create user. OK. Create new user. OK. Then you add them, add to territory, right? OK. When you're done with this one, right? Mm -hmm. The next step you will do is that create a MetRep monthly list record for the rep. This is the step we are now? No. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, no, I, I already complete that one. That's oh, on. This is okay. Fine. Create a MetRep monthly list record, right? So here you have two ways. Uh, Manually, okay. Create target list for the rep, okay. Or this you have to repeat, okay, because target list is gonna be for each XCP, okay. Or you have another way is that must upload the target list for the rep, okay, but son. OK, so we are on the manually create target list for the rep, right? Yeah, correct. Now? Yep. OK. So where is the part where it shows? 
Huh? Sorry. Where are the HCOs? Where are the HCOs? The the things I choose from from the previous range. Okay, this is great. The process is great. Okay, then I will go. Uh, I will go. Um, you know, review the create monthly list record. Okay, I will create. I will re review this one. But for the target list now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we are here. The work, finish the work chart. Okay. So and, this. Uh, OK, hold on. OK, so you have here, right? Create a relationship between the rep and XCP. OK, this is with yes. one XCP if you enter it manually. But it's here, right? Is that must create, OK? OK. Clear, Basan? This is clear. The process is clear. Show me the last step, the manual creation on your on the manual, so I will I will catch up with you. This okay. is what I was asking about. So this is the manual one. Okay. Screen. You click on new, right? You select the map rep. You select the XCP. Okay, here. You select the map rep monthly list record you create for the XCP. Okay. You select profiling classification. Okay. Then you assign a target visit for this person. Okay. Clear. Thank you. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I, I think that let me like define a flow chart, like create a flow chart like what I just showed before and send back to all of you. Okay. Then now, right, it's just the mass upload here, right? You see that profiling start date, end date, target. If I start, uh, Basan, okay. So I suggest, highly recommend that we go with upload, okay. Yes, once we are trained about this bulk, bulk upload, definitely we will use it. Yeah, okay. I think that I will schedule another, I think, let's do it like mini, like a mini one every day, okay? That's all okay. Like each day we practice upload one to two objects that are, in in system okay then next one important one data chain request management Wait, prior to move further you know i have a question in my mind that uh, mm. do do you think that it is better that uh, matter uh, should you know make the monthly target instead of that we will give the uh, target to them because he knows each and everything about the you know hcps like the timing like uh, how many times you know he can you know visit to the to, uh, to that specific doctors mm. so yeah we can set you know uh, as you mentioned there that uh, for a class you know he's supposed to you know visit four times but there are doctors who are really potential they are uh, got eight class to, uh, you know xcps but somehow he's not able to you know uh, visit four times in a month so uh, does the MADRAP has this liberty that he can, you know, uh, change the frequency or like that? In, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be via monthly target planning or via data chain request, uh, Salim. Yeah. So, okay. so MADRAP can do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. That, that yeah. Well. yeah, but the step that I just worked, Basan, here, I, I just shared with you here, right? Is this for new MADRAP? Completely new, doesn't have anything in his yeah, list. True. Yeah, it's like completely new. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So then the next one, right, is going to be for data chain request management. So as I mentioned, okay, with the FOM yesterday, you have, so as we are live before, all of the thing related to data updates rep they can go to pictures submit a data chain request and then they will submit for their light manager review first just first line manager is good enough and then once the first light manager review and approve right then that request will be sent to you as a final approval to do sanity check okay about the data before the system like insert into the database okay so now, right, how to view all of that request that's been sent to you for review. You click on the mass approval tab. 
Okay, then the system will show you a list of the record that waiting for you to review and approve. You'll be able to see for each record, right? What is this request relating to? Okay, here, Matt Redman list, data request, marketing event, etc. Okay. Then, or you can view the approval request waiting for your confirmation via our homepage. Okay, when you click home, there will be a, 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 a section called items to approve. You click view all, then the system will navigate you to item to approve out of the box of Salesforce for you to view the list of the record here. Just one note, okay? There is no um, mass approval feature if you go with option two, okay? Option one, if you want to mass approve, right? You just need to check on the record, the list of the record, then you click button approve or reject here. But VR says for out of the box, okay, approval request tab, you will need to perform the approval confirmation manually one by one. Okay, that is the difference. Okay, any question? No, right? So then the next one is going to be about the approval process for adding new XCO. OK, so when the data chain request submitted in picture, then SFA review it, right? Then you will see you will be able to open that record to view in the system. OK, and then if this is a duplicate one, then you can do final check to say whether you approve this record, this request or not. OK, so if you approve, OK, in the scenario that the XCO rep, the XCO that the rep is asking, okay, I think that maybe let me use the flow charge again. This is quite complicated to explain. Okay, so they request for new XCO to be added, right? To their territory. Okay. Then, right, if this is a duplicate one, Duplicate with or uh, uh, like mean that we have this XEO in our AN Connect database already. Okay. Like this. Okay. No duplicate. Okay. So if duplicate, right, the system will not, okay, create a new XEO. Instead, the uh, system will add, okay, this XEO to MedRep territory. Okay. And complete the process. OK, if there's no duplicate data, meaning that this is a totally new XCO, right? Then the system will create new XCO to the red. OK, new at create new XCO in AN Connect database. OK, if you approve, OK, then we'll add this XCO to MedRep territory. OK. So this is the first scenario for uh, data chain request for add new XCO, okay, submitted by the rep. Is it clear for this one, uh, team? So when when you approve this this tool, right, then the rep they will be able to see this XCO VR picture. Okay, so be careful when you review and then you approve any data chain request. Okay. Any question for this one? Tim, you have any question? OK, so next scenario for data chain request, right, is that remove XCO from MedRep territory. OK, so when you approve this, there's no duplicate check for this one, OK? So when you approve this, what will happen is that system, okay, will remove this XCO from MedRep territory, okay, and MedRep will no longer see this, okay, it, this XCO and XCP under this XCO in their target list in picture anymore. Okay. 
Is it clear, Tin? For the second scenario. Okay. I text silence as mm, no question. Okay. The next one, right? It's going to be about at new XCP to their target list. Okay. Target list. Okay. So if they do so, right? So when you go to AN Connect, you view the data chain request, right? And then you see that this is a duplicate XC, XCP, okay? Just that the rep is unable to see this XCP before because this is not in the current target list. So if this is the duplicate file, right? So the system will add this XCP to MatRep territory, uh, target list, sorry, okay? Clear. If no duplicate, right, the system will create a new XCP. Okay. Will def create, okay, the relationship between the XCP and the XCO. Okay. And at the same time, it will insert, okay. Okay. It will like create a new target list. Okay, for the rep. Correct. Clear team. Okay. Then rep. Okay, they would be able to see this XCP next month. Okay, team. If now it is February, right, and then they add this XCP, it will not immediately, okay, appear for them to create call plan for this month. Okay. Any question here? Basan team, all clear. So, wait for uh, the relationship uh, between XC and XCP. It is mm -hmm. like uh, whether he's an influencer or a doctor or. Correct. Uh, Where is he? Like, what is the best time to visit this XCP at this XCO? Okay. okay. Yep. Okay. So I just want to remind you about the principle relating to data chain requests that we align during blueprint. Okay. So the next use case, right, that you can see here, okay, is going to be about deactivating an XCP. Okay. So there is a note. Once the DCR has been approved, okay? Then the system will immediately update the status of this XCP, okay? For this red, for the current month target to be temporarily deactivated or suspended, okay? Only, okay, the deactivating an XCP will immediately, okay? Effect, okay, affect the current month, okay, for new XCP, and then for the update target visit frequency, it's gonna apply for next month, okay. Is it clear here, team? Oh, oh, can you repeat? Like for new uh, XCP, it will do it immediately for in the current no. month. No, add new XCP and then update target visit frequency going to be applied for next month. Removing yes. or deactivating an XCP will impact immediately for the current month. Okay. Okay. So once we approve the DCR, Mm -hmm. This uh, will automatically appear as temporarily deactivated yep. and correct. nobody will have to come and deactivate it. Yeah, correct. Okay.
Okay, is there any other question? Okay, so don't worry. Okay, we speak a lot, but here on the training document, right? I already mentioned what is the next step. Okay. Now, uh, next one, map rapidly target planning. Okay, so when the line manager, they approve the plan, right? Then you will be the next person to review and perform the final approval confirmation. So here, you'll be able to see the information. Okay, all of the information that the rep they input. Okay. Yep. Okay, and then yes. if approved, you just need to click button approve. Quick check team, do you want me to go through the whole like how the system do the map rep monthly target planning again? We have, yeah, yeah, we have been talking about this, I think like not less than four times. Yeah. Okay. Yep, so I skip it. Can I? Okay, then the next part that I want to talk to you about is going to be about backdated call report. Okay, before I hand over, I pass the screen to my team member, Peter and Cairo, okay, to walk you through the rest. Okay, the remaining. Do you have a break, small break in between? Uh, yep, can. Can we have 15 minute break, team? We're back at 20, okay? Yeah, thanks, team.
Hi, team. Shall we continue? Yes. Okay. So then the next one, right? Uh, the next thing that we will need um, help from SFE, right, is going to be to unlock, okay, the backdated core report that the head rep have. Okay, so what does it mean? i show you an example from the rep. Okay, so there will be scenario that the rep, they save the draft core report, okay, from visit okay that belonged two days ago okay and then they go on leave they did they don't submit any tot there's no public holiday okay then when they come back to work they try to submit those core report belong two days ago then the system will block them from submitting those core reports so this is the core report submission val validation rule number two that we mentioned with the rep this Tuesday. OK, so when the rep, they hit this button and then they see that the system show them that call should be a submission period, right? Then what they need to do next is that, as we mentioned to them, they need to contact SFE to unlock the core report. And then once you already unlock the core report for them, then they will need to go to picture my draft core report tab and open the draft core report to submit. OK, then they have 24 hours to submit those locked draft core report. OK, so now how what is the step for you to unlock this for them? OK, so you need to do what you need to do is that you go to Salesforce. OK, you find the user. OK, then um under user settings there's a part called exception details okay so you're gonna input the core report exemption day okay here so for example today is is um now we are setting in the system to have it to be three days okay so let's say today is our uh, thursday 17 right i have draft core report saved in my uh, uh, picture in my device from eight I mean that Tuesday last week. OK, and then I go on leave urgent leave. OK, I have a series of core reports safe as draft for visit day from eight until 10 of uh, February. OK, and then I'm just back from work. OK, working today. Then I try to go to picture and try to submit core report. OK, belong to last Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. OK, last week. System blocked me. OK, then when they uh, when they request you to support them, unlock those those days for them to submit those draft core report, right? So you will go to the system. OK, and then you will select OK for core report exemption date. OK. You will enter the date from which backdated entry can be entered by user. OK, which means that so let's say that I have a series of draft core box saved in my iPad from 8 to 10 of February, right? Then the date that should you should enter here going to be 8 of February. OK, so when you enter that way, then the rep will be able to submit the core report for 8, 9 and 10 of February. OK, and then they have 24 hours OK, to submit those core report before the system lock them again. OK. Is it clear how you like and help them to unlock the backdated? Yeah, to unlock the, the backdated one. Team, is it clear? Should I repeat? OK, but San, Salim, Brenda, you know how to handle the scenario that the rep see the issue that I just the error message that I just show. You understand it now? 
this error. This error message that they save so many drive call report, okay? And then it's already exit the backdated, okay? Period. So that's why now you need to have them to unlock, okay? Then, because you know that during Blueprint, we allow that we have two validation rule, right? So the other one gonna be sequential reporting. It means that in order for the rep to submit to their core report, they need to ensure that they don't have any draft core report saved in the system for yesterday visit. Okay, so this is going to be a different error message. Okay, so for this error message, we train the rep. They should go to that uh, to submit all of the draft core report belong to yesterday. Okay, and then now go back and then submit to their core report. Okay, is there any question before I move to Salesforce map training? Okay. So, Koi, as we agreed, oh, sorry, Koi, as we agreed yesterday during the training, I will encourage and I will stress on that all draft core reports has to be submitted. Uh, before the uh, the day ends that yep. will affect the next day call submission they will not allow them yep correct they have three they have three days correct to keep these drafts the, the error message will appear if any calls pass three days this is yes. correct that we agreed on right Cor correct so, this error message for the normal planned call Mm -hmm. uh, will appear after if they have cold drafts for more than three days. Then they will uh, issue a data chain request to unlock them, or they will send an email. I missed this part, sorry. They will send an email. An email, not a data chain request. Yep, all okay. right. Thank you. Okay. So then now, right, this is, oh, sorry, before I move to the next one, is there any other question for backdated core report unlock? Okay, so if no other questions, right? So next one is gonna be for Salesforce map, okay? So Salesforce map, um, it's just like, um, a way for us to visualize the XCO and XCP data based on specific criteria that we set up. Okay, the way that it will visualize, it will visualize using the map. Okay, so when you go here, right, when you want to view the map, you click on the app launcher. Okay, click on maps. Okay, then there will be layer. You go to corporate folder. Okay select the folder uh, belong to your affiliate okay and then you will be able to see some of the folder that we already create here okay when you click on one item here okay then the system will show you okay on the map the the data the xco or the xcp that match i'm sorry that match with the filter criteria that we define for each map layer here. Okay. If you want to see like own XCP, right? Okay. Using the map. So you click on all XCP. Okay. Then system will show you, okay, the each, each pin that you see here represent an XCP. Okay. If you select XCO, the layer to filter and show, visualize the XCO data on the map. Okay. Then each pin will represent an XCO. Okay. Is it clear, team? Okay. We already set up some map layer for you to use. It's mainly will show you how many XCO, what is the list of the XCO hasn't been assigned to any map rep territory or if there is any XCP, not it not in any map rep target list for this month. Okay, and the current and the next month. So that from there you'll be able to say that whether you want to add that XCO, okay, 
to any med rep territory or not. Okay. So what Next. is uh, the main function of the maps? Like, uh, is it for the route plan or uh, is it something else? Yeah, it's going to be for the route planning, but this is going to be for SFE. And then also it's going to just use to visualize the location of the XCP and XCO, follow the filter that we set up. Okay. So this is in our call solution from day one. Okay, so I hope that it will be helpful for you when you discuss with the light manager about the territory planning. Okay, you can consider the route planning. Okay, yeah, to, to like advise them for this map right, right based on his location, XO and XCB location, right? Whether we should assign this XO XCB to this rep or we should assign to another rep. Okay. Wait, okay, can we use this, you know, uh, app for to track our, you know, mad rep? No. Uh, the current look of the map. No. No. OAC, OAC not allow us to track map rep current location. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know that. I know that, but but th this app can track. No, can cannot. We disable that's we, we don't allow that one. Okay. Yeah, and our CEOs and HCPs. Yeah, correct. Not for rep tracking. Not for rep tracking. That is not Okay. Then the next one, a really important one, is going to be for consent management. Okay. So um, for the rep, okay, the, 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 um, when we check, okay, in, in the, um, in the morning section, right, we check the consent management, okay, of the rep has rendered inside picture, right? So actually for the rep to see that whether it's a Saudi communication or data storage, right? Actually, our team, SAP team, you need to create a consent topic. Okay, consent a consent topic in AN Connect is actually represent a consent tab in picture. Okay. Okay, so why we have the cat why we give you the capability okay to create different consent tabs in an connect because over the time right the consent uh regular like the regulation around content keep changing okay it's not only for europe even now for pa it's, it's already changed okay so we create this instead of a fixed code so that every time like um your affiliate has something changed about consent right then you can make the update inside the system to ensure that your rep will always get uh, XCP consent for the follow the latest um, rule, okay, of your affiliate. Okay, so now if you want to create a consent topic, right, you go to AN Connect, okay, your affiliate, your SAP app, you will have a tab called consent topic, okay. Then you gonna input the consent topic name, okay? Define which type of is this consent, whether it's communication, data storage, etc. Well. Okay. Mark if it's mandatory or not. Okay. Check off the channel here. Okay. And then select the validity period for this one. Okay. Yep. And then when you set this one right. Then the rep, when they give the iPad, okay, when they get the XCP consent, okay, then the XCP will be able to see, okay, the consent name, okay, then he will be able to check, okay, which channel he want to up in, okay, and then he will be able to see the disclaimer note also before he provide a signature. So when the rep, they save this consent rep, the consent record created for this consent tab, okay? 
if you mark this to be mandatory, then immediately we will update, okay, the snapshot of XCP consent on the consent record, okay? And then based on the validity, okay, period validity dur like duration you set here, the system will auto set what is the next expiry date of this consent record of this XCP. Okay, and then the system will send auto reminder email to the rep to let them know, okay, if there's any XCP whose consent is about to expire in next 10 days. Okay. Team, is it clear? So, what would be the topic? Uh, like, uh, how would we give a name uh, to this? I think that you should check with the OEC to see like what is the consent tab that they the rep need to collect now. Normally for from all the this communication. Yes, Khaled on the call. Uh, Khaled, uh, can, uh, this is for Altafan. Now the the one currently uploaded on Connect is approved by OEC and this on or mandatory. The email at least to be to be uh, approved consent, correct? Uh, I don't understand your question, Basant. Can you please go, go to the consent page? This is what you are talking about, Altafan. Yes. Uh, give me one second. I'm sorry. <coughs> you are our messenger for the call for the <laughs> consent. Okay, so this is consent. Okay. okay. Uh, let me. No, no. One. The one inside from the HCP one. The one has the boxes. Oh, uh, okay. To be easier. Okay, this one. Give it one second to load. Mm -hmm. Uh, this XCP. Okay. Yep, this one, right? Okay, well, new, okay, can you create a new one? Uh, create a new one so the boxes will show. Will yeah, show. That, let's create a new one that new concept. So, sorry, team. What you are asking me to do is set up a consent topic for your affiliate or add a new consent for this XCP. No, no, add a new consent, the one that we will ask the team to be mandatory checked. Okay. So you have to create a new consent topic, okay? Here, or you update the exceeding one. Let me update the exceeding one. This is mandatory, okay? This is consent tab as communication, okay? Consent topic name, okay, you input it here. Mark the channel, okay? Yep. So to be approved, how many from email, mobile, virtual, anything to be approved is the email and the, the phone number or only the email it will consider approved? Uh, no, we don't set it to be required here, but son, we just mark it here so that the rep know that when they get a consent, right, they choose this tab, they know that we should, should not require, okay, should get the consent for this. Okay, get the XCP opt-in for those channel that we check here. Okay, but XCP can say whether they want to check which channel they want to be communicated via. Okay. So in, in this, Basant, you're not creating the consent for any given HCP. You're creating a, a request for reps to get consent of what's checked here. So if I only check email, that means that the that reps should get consent for the email uh, to, to, to send uh, uh, emails to HCPs. If I check all of them, then, then I'm asking the rep to get consent for all of these. But the consent can only be given by the HCP, not by you. You're just creating, uh, uh, let's say, a request for, to collect that, that, all those types of consents from the HCPs via the rep. Okay. Do you understand what I mean? Yes, okay. Okay, so let me do a demo now, right? This is the setup that the SFE do 
inside AN Connect, right? Then the rep, when they open their consent, capture feature in um, in picture. Sorry, maybe what will help the team understand, what's an example of, of when the team would need to separate the types of consent? It depends on like, oh, oh, what do you mean, Khaled? It depends on your OEC. Okay. okay, because as of now, we only have communication. communication. Yeah, then you just need to capture for communication consent. You yeah, just have that was to... my question, like we, what would be the main topic for us? And then we can add everything that could be covered. But uh, under the topic, we should use communication. Yeah, because in, in, in Europe, for example, you they need consent to even store the data. In our case, that's not that's not the case. As long as there is a valid reason to store the data. So when we when we sp spoke to OEC about email address specifically, why are we storing the email address and phone number? We told them that the valid reason for that was that we would we needed for deduplication um, across of uh, uh, of our database. And Koi, correct me if I'm wrong, in that conversation, Marina was fine with it. Yeah, Marina is fine with it. Did yeah. we capture this in our in in um in the things that we aligned with her in that email, Koi? Uh you send an email to her, right? I don't know that email coming. I don't think so. No, you oh. you're the one that wrote it. Um no, I don't think we put that there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because the the own file, right? The the original file that we worked together in November, it disappeared on SharePoint already. Yeah, I know. Okay, that's fine. I can I can work with her on that as well. Um, just as a okay. But then then call it back to that conversation, right? We agree with her that we will we'll keep the XCB email address, but we will not send them any uh communication until exactly. we have. Send agreement. So they are fine with email capture and phone number capture also. Okay. So yeah. now I just make an update for the consent, right? Okay, let me wait for it to synchronize. Okay, so I click menu, I click consent, right? Then I will capture a new consent. Go FCP here. Okay, I start new. Then you see that right previously for SA communication consent, I checked the box set up okay in AN Connect to be they should collect email, phone, virtual meeting messages, Jing app and SMS, right? Then the rep, okay, they go and then they ask the XCP, then XCP, right? They don't want to be communicated via phone or messaging app or SMS, right? So only email and virtual meeting. Okay, then they click save. Then you you will see that this is the name, okay, of the consent that you enter in AN Connect. You set up in AN Connect, okay. This is the disclaimer note that the the XCP will see when they provide a signature, okay. You understand this part yet? Then I click save, okay. Then I wait for it some time to finish the synchronization with Salesforce. Okay, because I checked this to be mandatory one. Okay, so when the rep they get the consent for this XCP, right? Then you will see that for um, this one. So now, right? Because this is a mandatory one, so on the XCP record. <coughs> Okay, the system capture. Okay, you see that one, right? Now I just capture it. Okay, and then I set the validity duration for this one to be 
36 months. Okay, so that's why the system auto set the concise expiry date. Okay, to be in 2025. And here's the journal that I that he opt in. Okay, then once done right, system will send an email template. Okay, to the XCP like this. Okay, and CC the rep. Okay, in the email. Okay. Is it clear, team? Yes, Before. clear, right? Okay. So then the next one, right, is gonna be for uh, <coughs> uh, creation of public group, uh, creation of public holiday and company event. Okay. So what if now we have a holiday, okay, or a company event, or training apply for a specific group of users? So what do we need to do? So first one, right? Because uh, there is some limitation around Salesforce when we go to the public group feature that I shared with you before. So for the public holiday and company event, right? If you want to apply that for a specific group of user only, then you need to create a public group in the system like this. Okay. And then you will start to add the team member to that public group. Okay. Yep. Okay. Team, can you still hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay, so then next one, right? You go to public holiday and company event. Okay, then you gonna like uh, create a, the public holiday and event. You click on the tab, then you click new. Okay, then you enter the holiday, a public uh, or a company event here, the name of it, the start date, time, end date, time. Select the tab of this event, whether this is a public holiday or whether it's going to be a common event here, okay? Then you're going to select the level, okay? Whether it's going to be applied, okay, for the whole affiliate, or it's going to be applied for a specific city, okay? Or it's going to be applied for a specific group of users or not. So you select the level here, right? Then if it's a donation, then you just need to select, the. then the system will auto-populate the country here for you. But if you select it to be for a specific area, right, then you will need to enter the name of the city here. OK, and then if this is a company event, a public event for only specific group of user, then you select, OK, the applicable user group here. OK, then you click Save. Then when you do so, right, then the system will automatically, OK, apply this event holiday or company event to a group of user okay based on the level and then the information that you fill out here okay so if you select country okay levels nation the system will apply this uh event okay this public event to all of the rep under this country if you set the city to be just Cairo under Egypt, right? Then the system will create and apply this public event only for MedRap, who is like working in Cairo, okay? If you have, you set this one to be for a specific group of user, right? Let's say that um, Bediatrix MedRap, okay, in Egypt, then you select the applicable user group here to be Bediatrix MedRap, right? Then the system will only apply, okay, create the public event and assign to the calendar, add it to the calendar for the Bediatrix uh, user in Egypt. Okay. Later, I will show you how to do the bug upload for the public group. Okay. How to mass add, okay, the user to the group. Okay. And then how you gonna do the bug upload for the for the holiday and then company event. Okay, we'll do that during the data upload. Okay, practice section together. Okay. Is there any question relating to public holiday? 
and comedy event? If not, okay, then Peter will walk you through the coaching management. Okay, so Peter, do you want me to share my screen or you want to share your screen? Peter cannot hear you. Okay, I think that Peter is having some audio issue. Okay, so no worry. Okay, so now, right, the next thing that I would um, share with you, right, is gonna be how you can, I think that Peter, you can rejoin the call, okay? Then uh, here, right, it's gonna be about the coaching template, okay? So when you have the coaching template, okay, shared by the training manager, then you can go to AN Connect, and then you create a coaching form template, okay? which are gonna be like used by your affiliate, okay? So the next one, right, is gonna be about the indication of John visit and then you sub the submission of coaching form for the rep, okay? So as we talked, bef as we discussed before, right, we understand that for MENA, SFE manager also John vis like perform John visit with the rep and then also submit the coaching form, correct? I hear a silent team. You you do coaching for your rep also, Anna? No, only for Saudi only join visit. I don't do coaching for them. I go before it was. Um, I don't do you know the sectors like um, discover like this, but it's only an overall comment because we we don't go to the field to 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 make the coaching. This is not the practice. The, Training manager and the sales and the FLMs mainly they are the ones who are doing the coaching. Okay, how about uh, Antaf? How about Kenya? Are are you doing coaching? Uh, Kenya uh, would be done by Zach. Only the first line manager has the. Uh, mm. this authority to do the coaching. Anybody can join with it, uh, mm. but uh, for reporting purposes, it will be the first time manager. Okay. How about and you, Sam? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, Antaf, go ahead. Yeah, this is the practice in uh, Pakistan as well. In the uh, previous system, it was only in, uh, limited to, the, uh, to his immediate manager. Mm. Okay. How about uh, UAE, Egypt, and then Iraq? Salim and Brenda? Yeah, for UAE, it's normally the first line managers who do who conduct coaching for the sales reps, although I've gathered uh, a desire from the product managers to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. okay. Currently, it's just the FLMs. And in Iraq, uh, you know, I'm telling you very candidly because they are uh, they don't have you know salesforce.com right now so I believe they don't have any sort of a template available where they can call their mad rap so I believe they they must have worked on these things but I believe it is all about uh, you can say uh, the mobile coaching I, I would say so yeah this is very new feature for them okay yeah, but actually yeah. for Iraq, right? Are you doing coaching for the rep? Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay, yeah, so you know how to use the coaching form already, right? How yeah, to yeah. Since, in, yeah, since in Pakistan we are using that, you know, training the people, so that's, yeah, uh, I'm very, very acquainted about these things. Okay, but you know how the AN Connect system work already, right? You know how to submit the coaching form in AN Connect already, right? Yes, I did it in the test script, so I know it very well. Okay, sure. So now, right, first, so as an SFE manager, right, when whenever there's an updated or relating to coaching form 
our, our training manager said that for your affiliate, you need to have a new coaching form, right? Then you'll be able okay, to set up the coaching form by going to AN Connect, click more here, select coaching form template, okay? First, when you click the button new, you will need to set, uh, you need to, this is just set up the name of the coaching form, okay? Which country, okay, this coaching form is applicable, okay? Which role will use this coaching form, okay, for? If this is a MATRAP coaching form, right, then you select the role as MATRAP, okay? And then if the coaching form, okay, created using this template require acknowledgement, right, then you should check the box acknowledgement required. I know for sure it will be auto check already. Okay, so we already marked it to default check for acknowledgement required. Okay, then you click save. Then the next step, right, is that on the coaching form, you remember that yesterday, right, we have mindset, strategy, the coaching corporate that you have you sent me before, uh, and stuff. Okay, so for those strategy, mindset, cover, opening, etc., it's called coaching form category in AN Connect. Okay, so what you need to do is that when you want for new coaching form, right? If you want to define new coaching category, okay, then you hover, okay, over like coaching form category, then you click new, then the system will open a screen like this for you to enter the coaching form category name. Okay, then you click save. Okay, if you have seven category on the coaching form, seven focus area, then you will need to repeat this step seven times. Okay. Then when you already done creating the coaching category, right? You will need to create the coaching form question. Okay, for each coaching category. Okay, then you open the coaching category. Okay, then you click hover. Okay, on the coaching form question. Then you gonna <clears throat> click button new here. Okay, and then you gonna enter the question name and then the scoring guide. Okay, if you answer this question, you give the rep one one score one point. Right? What does it mean? Two point. What does it mean? Okay, then you click save. Okay. Yep. And then next one, right? In case later when we already have AN Connect, and then uh, SFE manager can join the visit with the rep, and then also like be able to submit the coaching form, right? So I just like quickly remind you about the how like how you gonna view the rep calendar here. Okay. You go to calendar. Okay. Uh, the calendar in AN Connect. You add that calendar first, okay? Then next time when you want to view that rep calendar, right? You just need to open your calendar. Then the working calendar of that rep will all auto populate it here, okay? On your calendar view, okay? Then if you want to indicate that you, you will join this visit with the rep, you click on the rep call plan, okay? Then you click button John visit, okay? And then the system will show you that you has been added as a John visit user to the rep call plan. So as we uh, train a met rep, remember this one, right? SAP manager, that when the rep, they open the call plan in picture, then they will be able to see your name that has been added as an attendee for their call, uh, call plan. And then the rep will also receive an email notification, okay? You got it? Okay. Yep. So now if you want to submit a coaching form, okay, for the coaching, you go here, you click on coaching form tab, then you click new, select the right name, select the template, then click next. Okay. Then you need to fill out the information such as number of John call, Number of John visit day, today coaching objective, what is the day of free work from, day of free work to. Then the system will show you a summary of what like your observation, your comment from previous coaching section for them is auto populated here, including coaching objective from last coaching day, observation from previous section, 
progress on item from previous section and total score from the previous section also. And it will also show you the best action plan that you define for the rep from the last coaching day. Okay. Then you will need to select what is the focus coaching area for today, where it's going to be mindset, strategy, open. Okay. Then when you click check the box, then the system will show you the list of, of the, all of the observation items under that coaching area. Okay. Then you're going to assign the score. Okay for each coaching observation item here. And then the system will auto calculate the score that the map rep obtained for this coaching area and then summarize, okay, and show it under the total score, okay, under coaching information section. So you can align with the rep first, okay, before you click button submit for acknowledgement, okay? Then before you submit for acknowledgement, please don't forget to uh, input your observation and progress on last month action item here. And then also like click button add row if you want to define some action item for your map rep, okay, based on your discussion, based on your observation from the visit day with them, okay? So, okay, uh, just uh, for a scenario that uh, is it mandatory to have a planning uh, coast uh, joint visit planned prior to the visit. For example, if I'm visiting a CO uh, with some rep and I find another rep there and I start uh, a call with him and coach him, would I be able to report that coaching? Hello? Yeah, sorry, Antaf, can you repeat again? Uh, my question is uh, whether is it, uh, is it necessary to have uh, the joint visit plan prior, prior to the visit? Like uh, in certain circumstances, we are in the hospital and we do not have time to plan the joint visit, but we can meet the, the RAP and start coaching there. So would uh, I be able to coach, uh, report this form? Yeah, yeah, you can, you can. You don't need to inform them. Uh, coaching form and job visit, right? Request is work separately and tough. You can submit coaching form for the rep whenever you want. The job visit request feature I just showed previously, this is only for the, to let them know, to notify them that they will join the visit with them. That's it. Okay. Yep. Okay, so now this is the total score. Then the rep, when they confirm, right, it will change to confirm and close it for you. Okay, if they reject, you will be able to go to AN Connect, update the form based on the conversation with them. Okay, and then resubmit for their acknowledgement. Okay, yep. Okay, so this is how the coaching management part works. Okay. So, Cairo, are you in the call? Yep, I am. I am. Okay, so I think that I will stop sharing my screen and then Cairo will walk you through the product management part. If you want to, if you want to share my screen, please. Okay. Uh, hey, uh, Khalid, I call you later regarding the email you just sent me, okay, Khalid? Okay, no worries. And you all see my screen? Yes, Cairo. You can. Okay, nice. So for product management, this module or this feature will allow the SFP to control the uh, brands, products, and inventories for the med reps to do sample sample jobs. So for the brands, you have several um, brand hierarchy levels like key brand, brand or sub brand, and then for products. These are like um, the products that are under a specific brand. They can also set whether they require a signature by the HCP during sample drop, if they are covered or non-covered product, or if uh, what kind of um, package type, or is it, is it like a tin, a bottle, et cetera. And then uh, there's also inventories that are linked to products. And these inventories are the batches, the different batches of products that you might receive from the warehouse. 
So I hope you understand the, the link between a brand, a product and an inventory. And I will go through with you how to create each of these items. Okay. So yeah, just what I said, creation of brand, product inventory, and also how to do a mass upload for all these items. So I believe more commonly, you would do a mass upload of inventories. Brands and products are probably rarer, but it will be good to know how to do mass upload for this as well. Yeah. So create a brand, it's very simple. In AN Connect, you can look for the brands tab in the top um, section here. But sometimes I know during the UAT, you cannot find a certain tab, right? It is because you have to go to this nine dots at the left hand side here. It is called the add launcher icon. So whenever you cannot find any um, feature, right? Just click on these nine dots and then search in the search bar and then the result will appear. So I search for brands, it will appear here. And once you click on it, um, the brands page will appear. So then on the top right hand side, there will be a button called new. So once you click on that button new, the new brand creation page or a pop up will appear. So it will allow you to input different information like the brand name, very self explanatory, whether or not the brand is active or inactive. So if a brand is active, the map reds who are um, under the brand, um, the BU that the brand is assigned to, will be able to see this brand and its associated products and inventories in picture. But once you deactivate a brand, then the brand, the product and the inventory will no longer be visible to the map reps when, uh, in their picture. Okay. So it's important if that this brand or this product or this inventory is currently in use, please set the status to active, quite important. Okay. And also you can see um, on this screen, there are certain um, fields that are mandatory by seeing the red asterisk. So I think you're very familiar with this. Just to be very careful, please remember to always uh, populate these um, mandatory fields. Okay. So to the brand hierarchy level, just so I briefly mention, there's key brands, brands and sub brands. So key brands would be like the big umbrella um, term or, or brands like, for example, Ensure or Pediasure or Similac. Then at the brand level, there can be um, different uh, you know, subsidiaries, for example, Similac Go, Similac Total Comfort, etc. So whenever you create the brands, you can create them and then link a subsidiary brand to a um, parent or um, a higher uh, brand in the hierarchy using this parent brand field. So for example, I have already created the Similac brand and I've already saved it. So this record is already in Salesforce. So now I want to create the Similac Total Comfort brand. I will uh, cl click on create new brand again. Fill in all the information, okay? The hierarchy level will be brand instead of key brand, okay? And then for the parent brand, I will search for Similac. Okay, I hope that is clear. And then um, the country is also important to set the brand to your country because the the, the brands will only be shared to the map reps in your affiliate. Okay. Uh, for business unit and sub business unit, this will control the visibility of the map reps for the brands that they can see in picture. So a simple example will be that um, pediatric nutrition brands will only be visible to PN uh, map reps. So those map reps who are under MN will not be able to see brands like Pediasure. So any any questions at this point? Yeah, I can't see your hands. So if you have any questions, just uh, sound up. So if there's no questions, I'll move on. So that was brands. Now we are creating products. So a product would be like, for example, Similac um, Total Comfort Vanilla Flavor Bottle 100 grams. Yeah, so these are the products that you sell or you distribute um, under the brand that you have just created. So to come to create a product, you have to repeat similar steps. Click on the app launcher here, search for picture product and then click on new. So you can uh, input all the information here, say same similar like the brand, I mean the product name, the whether or not the product is active, the country of the product that um, you know the users, the map rep should be able to see. 
as well as the business unit and the sub business unit. So these are all quite um, self explanatory. So there's a few here called brand. So it is important for you to link a product to a brand. So the, the example that I gave you Similac Total Comfort, whatever flavor, whatever weight, right? Um, you have to link it to the Similac Total Comfort brand. So this will help to keep your brands and your products very organized in the hierarchy. And you can keep a like track close tracking on all the inventories and samples that have been distributed for each product and each brand. Okay. So here, there's a very important field that is quite small, but it's at the very bottom of the screen. I will make a laser pointer like here. Okay. It is called product category. So product category actually controls whether or not a sample requires HTTP signature during sample drop. So a product that is WHO or local code covered, it means that the, H, the HTTP will have to sign when the Mac rep does a sample drop for that. Whereas a WHO local code non-covered product will not require HTTP signature. So we've already trained the Mac reps on this during the Mac rep um, training sessions. But then as a SFE, you will have to be very careful when you set up the products that you set up the correct category for this uh, product, because this is where you control with how the map reps um, will interact with this sample and how the HCPs, whether or not the HCPs will have to sign for that uh, sample during the drop. So please pay attention to this field product category here. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah, I don't hear anything, so I'm going to move on. Yeah, so what I was just explaining was how to um, do it in the, so I mean, how to indicate that a product is local code covered or non-covered, but there's an additional um, logic that you have to be aware of. So when we go live, the Deloitte team will already have set it up for you, but it is just for your information, good to know. And in case if there's any changes in the future, you will know uh, what to do. So this is in the custom metadata section. So just now Koi brought you through the custom metadata section to update the target visit frequency or the event target for the year or the weekend setup. So this is also the setup to uh, determine whether or not a product requires HTTP signature during drop. So you go to the metadata section, okay? Click on your country. And if you look for a section called um, product category required, this is the, the value that you should set a product to in the product category field to make sure that signature is required during sample drop. So for example, in the future, you no longer want to call it WHO slash local code covered. You just want to change it to covered. OK, so in the front end side, when you are trying to set up the um, uh, product, you have to change uh, that to just covered. And in the back end here in the custom metadata, you will also have to update this value here to just be covered. So both on the front and the back ends, they are aligned and sync. So when the MapRap drops a covered product, they will uh, be able to collect the HCP signature. Okay, but this is just a good for you to know. We have already set this up for you. So what you see here is what um, you will have during go live. Yeah, but this is just in case you have to make any changes in the future. Question here, Kairu. Um, hmm. For any of these initial setups, whether it's a brand, product, and anything we've discussed prior, what is still left to do that the team has to do? Uh, okay, yeah, so this is regarding like uh, sort of migration, right? Data migration. So um, uh, they actually don't have to do much because I've already sent out data preparation templates to everyone. I'm sure they are aware. And actually the deadline is tomorrow, okay? So in those templates, I've already asked each um, affiliate SFE to prepare a list of brands and products and inventories that are currently in use so that when we go live, all the data would have already been ready and the SFEs don't have to do anything. So um, what is left actually is just to prepare that sheet for me. And then uh, 
if there's any changes before the go live date, uh, give me an update. And then uh, once you go live, everything would have already been done. And in case you have to make any changes, you can do so directly in the system. Does it answer your question, Khalid? Yes, it does. Thank you so much, Cairo. Yeah. Um, so team, um, can we, for those who haven't already, please provide that data um, because the Deloitte team is really making it easier for, uh, easy for you, as you can see, at least for the go live. And then any future changes, that's the purpose of these trainings so that you know how to change them or add new products as they come and so on. So for, yeah. those, for anyone who hasn't sent that data sheet, please send it by tomorrow's deadline as we agreed. Yeah, so, so far I've heard from Yasmin and Brenda for Egypt and UAE. So yeah, just looking forward to Saudi and Iraq and Kenya. Yeah. So I had up updated in the link. Ah, you have. Okay. Then um, it's because I actually checked your data this week, like uh, two days back, and I've already left some comments. So I hope that you have already seen my comments, right? I sent an email with red, um, red uh, comments. Yeah. 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 You seen it? I, okay. Then. I I did it after the comments uh, because okay. there were two comments only from Kenya side. Mm. So they have given me the branch that they would be promoting, mm. but for samples they have not yet responded clearly. But they are they are not going to have any samples, for, mm, yeah. and they don't have any samples as yet. Yeah, I so heard from Zegas. Yeah, so the brands are there, and I have uploaded it in the system. So yeah, I will give you a formal email as well. Okay, nice. Thank you. So it's just um Saudi and Iraq. So once you are um. Done, it would be good to drop me an email so I know that it is the final version in the SharePoint. Otherwise, I wouldn't know which is the final version to extract. Yeah. So please um so, wait. so Kai, I have also you know updated the file you know, by myself, you know, a couple of days ago. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You've, and I, uh, I'll provide the, you know, whatever the information, you know, uh, I had, you know, in Iraq because these are the brands they are redistributing. So I have uploaded all the data. So if uh, I'll check your email as well because there is there are some issues with that data so we'll you know mm. rectify it thank you back okay yeah so i hope that uh because ekta uh, just also sent a reminder email so you can refer to ekta's reminder email uh in that thread there it, it contains my email with the comments so please take a look at the red comments for your affiliate and then make the updates and then ping me or email me once you have the final files in the sharepoint yeah so then we will review again and then let you know if there's any changes being made. But hopefully um, you have already, you know, it's been always very clear what to do and you are already very familiar with the process. So hopefully not much changes to be made. But feel free to update me if there's any changes between like tomorrow and the go live date because we will sort of take it as like the final version already because brands and products probably won't change too much. Yeah hope that um, you understand the, the purpose of this exercise. Yeah, and really appreciate your cooperation to provide it by the deadline. Okay, so if there's no other questions, then I will move on. Okay. So that was the creation of the product. Now we're talking about the inventories. So inventories are like batches of a specific product. For example, Similac um, Total Comfort one, uh, yeah, total comfort, right? And then uh, I have different batches of this product that you are dropping with different expiration date, different batch number. Yeah, so this is where we capture the different batches that we uh, gave out to the net reps. So similar to brands and products, navigate to the app launcher, search for inventory, create a new inventory, and then input the inventory information, like the name, including the batch number, okay? The, the, the lot, which is the batch number, you can repeat that um, information here. Okay, this information will be shown to the map rep in picture. Okay. Product, meaning uh, which product does this batch belong to? So you have to link them accordingly in the hierarchy. And then um, the expiration date, very important, because the expiration date actually controls the visibility of this product in the map rep's um, picture screen. Because if a product is about to expire within the next two weeks, then when MedRed tries to do a sample drop in picture, the MedRed will not be able to see this product. 
that is going to expire in the next two weeks. So we must always have an uh, expiration date populated here so that the MedRat will know and MedRat can see those samples in picture. Okay. So that was the inventory creation. Yeah, so, so far I've been talking about brand, product and inventory. They are all linked to each other. And these are all what I've been describing manual um, creation, meaning you go into Salesforce and then you create a record one by one. But after this slide, I'm going to show you how to do it uh, mass creation. OK, but OK, there's a hands on practice. So let's skip this part for now. I want to talk about how to do a, a mass upload. OK, so similar to what you have already seen before, you have to prepare a Excel sheet. Okay, like the name of the brand, whether it is active or inactive, at the country and the business unit, you have to prepare a nice um, Excel sheet for this. And we will also provide you the, the template for this. So you just have to populate the information. Okay, go to Salesforce Inspector that we have already you know, mentioned many times before. Go to Salesforce Inspector and then paste the Excel data inside the sheet here, inside this box here. And then you just have to pay attention to the object they are uploading. So if you're uploading a brand, okay, you have to select brand. If you're uploading product, select product, and then inventory, etc. Just have to be very careful which um, hierarchy level you're um, uploading for, brand, product, or inventory. Okay, yeah. So select it accordingly, paste your data, and then click on import. And yeah, Salesforce inspector will feed back to you whether it is a successful or a fail um, upload. You just have to read the error message. It's quite um, quite self-explanatory. Sorry, was there a question? Sorry. So, Caro, can, can mm. you back? Okay, back. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so no. Uh, what 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 is the difference between brand, you know, pharma product and sample? Basically, it's a it's a you know form of a you know samples like uh, if we are you know distributing the commercial. Uh, products, so we can say that is the brand. I, I don't comprehend ah, it. Okay, okay. So you don't understand the linkage between brand, product, and sample, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so brand is like the the marketing like name of the the brand that you are you know promoting. So Pediasure, Ensure, Similac, those are the brands that Abbott has, right? That is promoting. Okay. okay. So we are just creating a record to, you know, uh, you know, how to say, safe or like indicate that, you know, these are the brands that Abbott has. So this is just the brand creation that we talked about. The next okay. part will be the products. So for example, let me ask you, under Similac, what kind of products are you selling? Yeah, I got it. The Similac yeah, is the you brand. Got it, right? Similac one, two, three is the, you know, products. Mm, correct. Yeah. So yeah. next is sample, right? Okay, so under Simlet one two three, you got it right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, clear. Okay, um, yeah, this is very important because I don't want you to get confused in this entire product management process. There's uh, different levels of to drill down the each product at the batch and lot level, from the highest level of a brand all the way to the next level, which is product and inventory. So we are very specific when we capture the batch that we are allocating to MedRats and then essentially, eventually what we will drop to the HCPs. So this is how you control the level. Okay. Yeah, so back to this, if there's no other questions, back to the slides, right? So I was just saying how Salesforce Inspector will provide you quite a um, comprehensive error message. So you just have to read the error message go and update your um, data in the Excel sheet, and then come back here to paste it and re-upload. So as Koi mentioned previously, we will practice this um, in a later time. So just know that you can also mass upload this data instead of creating one by one. Okay, so that was brand, product, and inventory. So you have created all these um, records now, but now you want to start allocating samples to the MedRaps. So how do you do this? 
we will actually have another um, uh, object called sample usage or inventory usage, which um, controls uh, different types of transactions of samples, be it um, assigning a sample to a map rep, for example, sample assignment, as you can see here, allocation of a sample to a selected user or a map rep. So the SF we when you receive the data sheet from the marketing team, you can do the upload of this um, sample allocation data. There's also sample transfer between users, meaning a map rep doesn't have enough stock of a sample and then they want to transfer from a colleague to, to themselves. Or for example, a map rep has resigned and they want to transfer away their um, uh, samples to another colleague. So this is a possible other transaction type of samples uh, between map reps. And also um, removal from inventory. So it could be in my previous example that a map rep has resigned. So instead of transferring that map rep's inventory to another map rep, they can also choose to return this sample back to the warehouse or back to the uh, marketing team. So this is where we capture such um, transactions. Okay. So uh, a brief summary of the different kinds of uh, records that we create is that brands, products, and inventories are sort of like the master records. They are there that you create and they are there to uh, aggregate these uh, transactional data, such as sample allocation, sample transfer, sample return. So these kinds of records are um, transactional that will be linked to their master inventory record or master product and master brand. Is everyone clear on the hierarchy and how this, um, you know, feature works? Okay, I'm not sure if the silence is confused silence or silence of understanding, but hopefully when I go through um, the next few slides, you'll be more clear of what it means. Okay. So I'm aware that um, Minap currently doesn't use sample load to where, uh, warehouse um, entry, but uh, let me just go through uh, briefly what it means. So a sample load to inventory, it signifies the um, addition of a, a sample or a, a lot to, from the, to the warehouse, I mean. Okay, so you have received a stock from the warehouse, so you want to update that you have received a stock on the warehouse. So you actually um, go to the inventory usage um, object that we have here, click on new and select the record type called home office entry. So we are adding stock to an inventory because let's say previously you created an inventory called Simulac Total Comfort Batch 1, okay, with the expiry date of I don't know, next year, okay? So you're just creating a record, but it doesn't have any quantities linked to it. So you can now come to inventory usage, the uh, object, create a new home office entry, and then start to enter, let's say Simulac Total Comfort batch number one. What is the date that you receive this, uh, uh, this batch? And then what's the quantity in this batch? So this is to allow you to record that you have received a batch of samples from the warehouse and then um, you can start to allocate to the net rates from there. But if you, as uh, in your affiliate, if you do not have this process where you receive, you just receive the samples directly from, I don't know, like from marketing and you don't really have any like direct contact with the warehouse, it's also fine. You can skip this step, but this is just a good to know. This is to uh, allow or to capture the addition of a stock, the quantity that has been added to an inventory. Okay. Now a sample assignment to user, which is sample allocation. Okay. Same steps come to inventory usage, create a new record and select employee load. So as the name suggests, you are giving a batch 
uh, loading some inventories into the your map reps um a stock. Okay, so select employee load. Click on next. Okay, similarly, you will have to specify which inventory is it coming from. Similac total comfort batch one. Okay, the date that you are allocating to the map rep, how many um samples, the quantity that you are allocating to the map rep, and which is the map rep that you are allocating to. All quite yeah, quite straightforward. So you can do this um to indicate that the map rep will be receiving this amount of samples. And once you click on save, the map rep will receive an email telling them that the SFE has uh, allocated them a sample of Similac Total Comfort, batch one, the quantity, the date, please, uh, please acknowledge it in picture. So the map rep will then go to picture, click on their sample icon. I'm sure you're aware during the UAT. Click on the sample icon, right? You can see that uh, that sample in the acknowledgement screen. So the map rep will then have to click on acknowledge that sample and then they can start doing the sample drop. So this is the sample assignment part. Sample transfer, similar, come to this creation screen, click on sample transfer, okay, click on next. And here, you just have to add one more piece of information. So other than which inventory you're transferring from, the date, the time, the quantity, just have to input who is the person who is giving the sample and who is the person receiving the sample? That's it. Okay. And once you click on save, um, the record will go through an approval process. So the line manager will receive this uh, sample transfer um, request and will have to go and review and approve it before the sample transfer will go through. And this process can also be initiated from the map website where the map rep goes to a picture and then uh, chooses the sample transfer option. And then when they click on submit, the line manager will similarly receive then an email. So this can be done on both the SFE site and the map rep site. But usually it would be initiated by the map reps. Okay. Any questions up to here? Yeah, very silent. <laughs> Not sure if you understand. Okay, never mind. Later, I will do a knowledge check with you. Okay. The next would be sample removal from inventory. So what this means is that, um, for example, a sample has expired or a sample is damaged and the map rep wants to return that sample. So the map rep um, or the SFE can help to do this on behalf of the map rep by selecting home office return. Once you do this, you just have to specify the inventory, the date, and the quantity, and maybe the reason of why you're returning these samples. And then once you click on save, then um, the uh, sample will be removed from the map reps stock. So when the map rep checks feature again, the stock will be seen to have been removed and uh, the new updated quantity will show up in feature. Okay, and similar, the map rep can also initiate this from their, their site by clicking on the return uh, uh, option in picture. Yeah. So this use case would most um, usually be used during like, for example, a resignation case where a map rep has resigned or uh, some samples have been damaged. So this is the purpose of this um, record type. Okay. And finally, um, sample distribution. Uh, most likely, SFEs, you don't have to ever create this because this will be done from the MAP website, but it is a good to know how this is uh, reflected on Salesforce site. So an inventory usage record actually means sample drop. So as you can see in the fields here, right, the inventory, the date, the quantity, and you can see here, um, contact, which is the HCP, and picture presentation, which is the core report form. So usually the SFE won't have to do this part, but as a as a FYI, 
This is where we capture sample drop information from when the MET rep uh, does a sample drop in a call with a HCP. And then when it gets synced to Salesforce, an inventory usage record type is automatically created in Salesforce. Um, to capture this information from um, picture site automatically. Okay. So just a FYI for you, you don't, I, I think it's unlikely that the SFE will ever have to um, create this kind of records manually. Yep. So five, can we yep. have a five weeks break? Five or <laughs> ten break? Okay, sure, sure. But can I just quickly go through the last part, which is the sample allocation part? Sure. Really, really quickly. It's just a uh, oh, no, not quickly. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because this is actually something you've seen before. So, the in Koi showed you this morning how to use this template to do a bulk upload, right? So, just to remind you, give you a refresher, that when you receive the sample file, sample allocation file from marketing, you can just put the information into the template that we will provide to you. Go to inspector, do a mass upload, then all the map reps will receive a notification email. Go to picture click accept and they can start to um, do a sample drop based on the samples allocated. Yeah, so those steps that I showed you just now are just for manual creation. This more preferred method is the bug upload. Yeah. yeah. I'm done with my part. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Any questions before we take a break? Uh, I think this is the last part already, right, Karu? Yeah. So actually, Tim, this is the last one already, okay? So actually, do you want to like take a break or we can use like the time we have left, okay? See if you have any question. If not, then we can close the call. I think we can close before taking break. Okay, <laughs> that means that we officially break. Okay, so Tim, do you have any question for us? I hear asylum, but I know for sure that during the practice of the data upload, right, you will have a lot of question. Okay. Mm. Mm. And I'm also, uh, I just want to make sure you can also, um, you know, ask us during those uh, upload sessions, what are the different kind of uh, inventory types or in inventory usage types? Because for sure you might forget or might get confused of like, oh, when should I, what should I select to do a sample drop or sample allocation? What should I do to do, use to do a sample um, return? Yeah, this is something that you will have to get used to, used to and get familiar with. So, you know, I know it's difficult to absorb at this point in time, but we can always refresh that later. Yeah, so. We have the training manuals with us. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, and and you guys aren't going anywhere. We have Deloitte until June, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. No, we we will disappear <laughs> right after this whole pilot. <laughs> we have you to torture for three and a half more months after this go live. Hmm. So, Koi, you wanna do a knowledge check with them, or we just let them free for today? <laughs> No, I think that let's like let's let the SFE have some time to take a break because they're gonna have like a really long end user training section in the next two weeks. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. They were good. Nice. So please uh, remember to provide the data preparation. Okay. For all the affiliates, the data preparation staff can be seen from the email that Ekta just sent in the afternoon. And then for offline countries, yeah, I forgot to mention. For offline countries, please also remember your next cut of the HCP data, okay? I hope you'll remember. I also sent an email in the past. Yeah, I will send a follow-up email later. Okay. Yes, Kai, we, we, we yeah. would have been ample times in, in the coming week. Uh, however, I'm flying to Iraq, but, you know, uh, we will have we'll ample time to, you know, complete the remaining tasks. So uh, hopefully we will make it in time. Okay, looking forward to receiving all your data, okay? We want to make sure the go live is 100%, all the data is prepared, ready, and like perfect when the users go live. 
So we are we are trying a level best, and uh, believe me, we won't even let you down because you did a great job. Kai and Goed both, you know, done a great job. So yeah, uh, this is our job to you know make it successfully. Okay, thank you. Yeah, any anything else, Roy or Khalid or Ekta? Uh, I think we call it a week already. So thanks, team. You have any question, right? So please feel free to reach out to us. Me and Ekta will check your calendar to schedule the section to practice the uploading. Okay, together. But I promise it's going to be not a full day like this. Okay. okay well, go ahead. You. You know, since I've been, uh, I will be traveling to, you know, there is a likelihood that uh, I would not be available all the time. So uh, do let me know in advance so that I can you know, schedule accordingly. OK, sure. I will check the other slot first before we, we send out an invite to everyone. Thank you. OK, so thanks, team. OK, Batsan, Ali, good luck with the training this Sunday. OK. And Tim, you just play around the app and let us know if you have any question, right? We need to ensure that you are well prepared for the user training. Okay. Um, I actually have a topic. Ekta, can you stop the recording?